Cashless transactions come in many forms, mobile and internet banking, POS machines and QR codes. Though cashless transactions are taking hold in Rwanda, some have been slow to embrace them. I have access to banks like Equity and BK. I also use mobile money with no problems. When someone comes in without a bank account, I help them and open up one for them. Not everybody is willing to engage in these types of transactions. Some want cash, and when you opt for mobile money, they demand that you give the extra amount for when they will be withdrawing. That is just how it is. When it comes to the use of cash in this pharmacy, we want it to end with this year of 2020. All our customers will be paying using POS or MomoPay. 95% of the country now has cell phone coverage and mobile money transactions are used by more than 4 million Rwandans. But MTN Rwanda is warning people against illegal transactions, limiting the number of times a person can receive money in a day to 10. We noticed what we call suspicious transactions. If a person's transactions were, say, no more than 30,000 Rwandan francs before the lockdown, and after the lockdown they are suddenly transacting in the range of close to 100 million Rwandan francs, where did they get that extra money? I am therefore calling on people to stay away from those involved in such illegal transactions. The central bank has confirmed that cash transactions result in losses amounting to 6% of all transacted funds, as opposed to just 2% for cashless transactions. In addition to this, the central bank itself spends between 2 and 3 billion Rwandan francs annually, replacing old banknotes and minting new coins, while ensuring the continued circulation of existing ones, not counting the salaries it pays the personnel that oversee all that. Commercial banks here in Rwanda are not faring much better when it comes to the cost of keeping bank notes and coins as well as cash transactions. If you take the top five banks, the top five banks spend about six billion annually just in handling moving of moving cash between ourselves, between the central bank. Remember somebody comes in, gives cash, we then have to take excess cash clear that through to the central bank. We have cash in transit companies we have to pay. Um, we have vaulting services that's, uh, um, that's provided by, by Intersec. Um, all of those costs need to be covered by somebody. And those costs are, have been absorbed up to now by the banks. So from a cost of doing business point of view, if we can reduce that amount of cash that's flowing and push uh, consumers to be using digital we can save a lot of money uh, within the banking sector. 15 of Rwanda's 16 commercial banks have mobile banking services, with 2 million people regularly using this option up from just 155,000 10 years ago. And the funds transacted using such services are up from just 5 billion Rwandan francs to 85 billion currently. 13 banks provide internet banking services here in Rwanda and transactions have now reached 100,000 in number per year, with 2019 seeing up to 2 trillion Rwandan francs transacted. With the central bank using the Rwanda Integrated Payments Processing Systems, RIPs, for transactions that exceed 5 million Rwandan francs, another 10 trillion Rwandan francs is transacted annually in the country through the system alone, usually done by commercial banks and their biggest clients. Encouraging as all this may sound, RIPs does not operate 24-7 rather just eight hours a day, Monday to Friday, which means checks and other payable means must be used when it is not running. Officials in the central bank say two projects are currently underway to overcome such challenges that still hinder all cashless transactions. I would like to emphasize that we are working on important initiatives to help to drastically reduce the use of things like checks and other forms of cash transactions. The central bank is working to enable the RIPS system to operate 24 hours a day. Another project is looking to link smaller institutions for transactions that do not exceed the limit that would qualify them for RIPS. Things like sector savings, cooperatives, SACOs, microfinance institutions or even banks and other companies. 
so that if you are using Airtel money, for example, you can send funds to a person that uses MTN mobile money or transfer money from a bank to a SACO account. We believe such infrastructure will enable people to access such services quickly. Bener says that after the decision to scrap fees related to cashless transactions after the emergence of COVID-19 was announced, they have tripled in the last two months.